Spirit, this morning, I want us to lift our bold hands and begin to give all the glory to the name of our King. Let's worship our King with everything that is inside of us this morning. Lord, we give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the glory. We exalt your holy name. We say thou art the mighty God. We thank you for who you are and who you are in our life. Just in case you are wondering, what should I thank God for this morning? Thank God for the blood of Jesus. you because this blood has done so much for each and every one of us in this building and anyone that is watching online this blood has done so much this blood has redeemed us this blood has saved us this blood has brought us close to the throne of god this blood has given us eternity Lord, I give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, I thank you for the gift of salvation. I thank you for the gift of eternal life. I thank you for the gift of your word. For the gift of tongues, what everyone is looking for, you gave it to us for free. You gave it to us for free. Lord, we give you all the praise. Not just that you got us saved, that you gave us your son, but you also give us this gift to give to men. Now we can meet people. We will preach the word of God to them and their lives will be transformed. Do you know how amazing that is? People that their parents have given up on them, that everybody has given up on them. Some people, even the government is tired of them. But through the word of God, there is an instant change. There is a true change. This word is so true. This word is so pure. This word is so powerful. This word is so great. That's at the point of salvation. All we had to do was to believe. All we had to do was to confess that Jesus came. He died for us. He rose again. He gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And now he has given us the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile men to Christ. And because of that, now we are kings. Father Lord, we thank you this morning because every time we pray, we receive answers for every prayer that we 
we've prayed and we've received answers. Lord, we give you all the praise. For every situation that seems impossible, that you are stepped in and you change the order of things. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And this morning, I want each and every one of us to declare from our spirit that every word that will be coming to us this morning, that we will be blessed by it. You know, a few days ago, we were in the service. And before I could just look around, I was hearing, let me try to close. I'm like, where did we start? This is to tell you how short the time is. So there is a need for you to be charged up in your spirit. There is a need for you to be ready for everything that the Lord is ready to give to us. Because the Lord has always been giving gifts to men. But how many people have received? It's because of this lack of preparation. But this morning, I want us to open our spirit. I want us to open our spirit. All the channels of your spirit. And declare that in this service, I will be blessed. In this service, I am receiving my deliverance. In this service, the word of God is coming to me. And I am receiving it. I am understanding it. And I am making use of it. This word is going to transform my life. Not just my life, but my family. But for every of my life class students. For my mother, for my father, for my brothers, for my sisters, for my cousins, for my friends, for my business partner. I received the revelation the service is there something you've been waiting for that's here the spirit this service is your service only if you are ready this service is your service because god said to tell you i am here for you this morning each and every one of us in the service nobody will be left out if you are ready the lord is here if you are this morning from WSC coming to minister to us. I remember the last ministration. I was telling my neighbor, I said, since I've been coming to this church, WSC blessed me today. And I know that it was because I was ready for that service. Because some people can see the same thing and nothing will be ministered to them. So I want us to open our hearts to everything that will be ministered to us this morning. And after WSD, we'll be having WSD. Coming to us powerfully in songs. And after then, we'll be having the word of God. Somebody said the word of God. Hey! 
If the word of God has transformed you, if the word of God has changed your life, tell your neighbor the word of God. Give glory to God and welcome WSD. to have you all joining us on another episode of today's talk show. Here with me is a renowned woman of God that has led a life for God and she's an exceptional example to this generation. Can we know you? I am Evangelist Herbert Teresa. I'm a woman of God and one who is so vocal about God in this generation. I have traveled far and near preaching and doing the work of an evangelist and by the word of God raised spiritual children who are diligently doing God's work. Wow, that's such a great feat and achievement. All to the glory of God. It is such a great privilege to have you here. Quickly, let's get into the business of the day. There has been a trending topic on the internet now for this and I would really love to know your take on this topic. You know, the social media children have been doing so amazing these days. Okay, let's have it. Yes. The post that has been trending from a popular social media influencer says, It is that time of the month where pastors scam their congregation in the name of Titan. Better feed yourself well, the economic is bad enough. Hashtag Titan scam. Hashtag hungry pastors. Hashtag shine your eyes wow that is deep yes and this has been trending with different views and opinions about church and tithing you know tithe is not a new topic because every day people wake up with different stories of whatnot and then it's a very very sensitive topic yes as a christian we don't pay tithe we give tithe because tithe is a giving we give to be blessed because if you put it in the sense of pain, it's as though you are paying for a debt not to be caused. Meanwhile, tithe is for a superior purpose. Wow. And when you tithe, no devourer can destroy anything about you because the authority to rebuke the devourer is no longer in heaven but with you by tithing. I believe our viewers are learning and enjoying the show everywhere they have. Um, Evangelist Teresa, we have two stories that start more controversy, and I really love to hear your view on this. Okay, let's have it. Ah, bro. 
How are you doing? Ah, I was training today. Now can you do a drink? You don't get I don't know. Uh, but hopefully this weekend. I should be able to get some provisions. But your mom sent you some money yesterday. Mm-hmm. She did. Ah. She sent me 35k. Ah! 35k? Yes, now. You want a drink, Addy? Wait. Hope it's not what I'm thinking. Ha, ah, this guy is caused. You can't at 5k. Put two seed and tight for church. Are you a fool? See your sin. Stop insulting me. I know what I'm doing. I am honoring the Lord. According to the scripture, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, that says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase, so thy barns shall be filled with plenty, and thy breast shall burst out with new wine. Would you go? The scripture for the who? The first student like you. For the rich. But let me just help you with this. See, no problem. Hmm. Easy, my dear. Thanks. So, how was your thing? Oh, it was great. Oh. Uh, you were saying something the other time. Oh, uh, yes. I already deposited the money you gave me this money to our account. And we now have a sum of 750000 Mm-hmm. But we need to pay our title. Uh, we did that already. We had a profit of 300000 and I paid them percent. Oh, we did? Yes. Um, my love, so you know we have an ongoing church project mm. and the pastor was making emphasis on the need to complete the roofing because it will be raining season soon. Yes. Why don't we give all we have? I don't get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, God, what type of man is this one? Like, I thought we planned using the money to rent a new apartment. Like, what changed? What happened? My love, Luke chapter 6, verse 38 in NLT. Give and you will receive. <laughs> Your gift will come to you in full, pressed wow. down, shaking together to make room for more. Running over. What you give will determine what you get back. <laughs> Why don't you give all, my dear? Wow. What I know is that we are using that money to rent a new apartment and that's fine now. My love, you have to understand me. I'm trying to make... These were the stories that sparked more controversial reaction on social media. And do you think it was crazy to give everything and be left with nothing? Just like the guy Moses said in one of the stories, Giving is an honor unto God. According to Leviticus 27, tithe is holy unto God. Yes, at least I remember my Sunday school teacher taught me the first man that gave tithe was Abraham. Yes, Abraham gave 10% of everything that he had to God. But today, some people have been so blessed that they now give 50% of every of their blessings to God. You know, giving is in levels. You give according to your revelation. Wow. Evangelist. Some people came up with the ideology that instead of paying tithes, mm -mm -mm. giving tithes and not paying. Oh yes, I beg your pardon. Some people came up with the ideology that instead of giving tithes to your rich pastors, you can give it to the poor around you. Oh. God himself said in Malachi, bring all the whole tithes into my storehouse so that there be food in my house. Where is the house? The church. Wow. And then it is so funny how people come up with carnal ideologies and then people gullibly buy it. I mean, in the book of Numbers 18, God told Aaron the priest that every first fruit and special fruit um, gift brought in by the children of Israel also belongs to them. So, who are the them? The priests, the pastors. That's deep. You see, I'm not here to cause confusion but to speak the, to, but to speak the truth. The children of this world, especially the social media children, 
can come up with any ideology that they think of but then as christians as children of god out there we should know and follow the laws and ordinance of god thank you so much evangelist for this pure words so children of social media can now rest and i hope you've gotten the right mindset on giving tithe and every other giving not make them misguided the out there so evangelist as we're rounding up what parting words can you give us Hey, firstly, I would like to say thank you very much for having me here. It's such a great privilege and I enjoyed every bit of it. I will say to the Christians out there, do not let social media change your perspective about the laws of God. There is a law for every giving and definitely there's a blessing for every giving. And there's this popular word that says, givers never lack. So keep giving and God will keep blessing and increase everything that concerns you in Jesus' name. Wow, thank you so much, Evangelist Teresa. As we come to the end of the show, I want to thank you all for joining. I remain your exceptional Davis Rachel. See you next time. Bye for now. Hallelujah. Glory to God in church.
Hallelujah, church. Because of the season, today is not just the Sunday, but today is significant because of the birth of Jesus, because of his death, and because of his resurrection. And because of Jesus, you and I can stand. And you and I can proclaim the gospel. You and I can, can share the love of Christ to people. Can you lift up your hands and choir sang a Jesu? If you are thankful and you are, you are grateful for what Jesus has done for everyone, lift up your hands and bless him this morning. Come on, you just have a few minutes to do this. Can you just say, Lord, I am grateful. Thank you for your birth. Thank you for your death. Thank you for your resurrection. Thank you because you gave me life. Thank you because I'm alive in you. Thank you because I have the life. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. Come on, come on, come on. Give God praise. But thankful to him this morning. Oh Lord, we are so grateful. And we've come with a heart full of praise this morning. We've come with thanksgiving to say thank you, Lord Jesus. With all of our hearts, with our spirit, with our soul, with our body, with everything we have inside of us. We say thank you, Lord. And we recognize this day, this important day, this day that is significant to the whole world. This day that is significant in heaven and on earth. And we say thank you. We join the angels in heaven. We join the 24 elders in heaven. And we say thank you, Lord Jesus. And when, with one voice, can you say thank you, Lord Jesus? Come on, I want you to say it again from the depth of your heart. As you lift those ends with everything you have inside of you, can you say thank you, Lord Jesus? And Lord, we declare this morning as we receive the word of the Lord, I pray that we are made by the word of God in Jesus' name. I declare that those word this morning will festoon her life. It will decorate her life. The brightness, the glory of God will radiate all over our lives in the name of Jesus. But the word this morning, I declare that everyone is elevated. I declare that those word this morning, everyone is transformed in the name of Jesus. And we declare the goodness. As we've been taught in life class on what the blood of Jesus did, we have peace through the blood of Jesus. We are sanctified. Here we are separated. And here we had this morning to receive the making that will make us to be separated. That will make us to stand up. That will make us to take this word and give it back to you. And I declare that we are blessed by the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' and wonderful name we've prayed. Before you take your seat, I want you to celebrate and appreciate the leadership of the system for the great privilege, for the great honor given to me this morning to proclaim the word of the Lord. Come on, is that how you can celebrate? You can do it better. Thank you so much. I honor the system greatly. And if you know that you've been blessed from the beginning of this service, with your blessed ends, can you touch one neighbor beside you and declare the blessing on the neighbor and please take your sex? Hallelujah. Wow. Happy Easter to you. So can you say to your neighbor, neighbor, happy Easter. Hallelujah. Today is the last Sunday of the month. 
and today is also the last day in the month. And we've been receiving teachings from our Father, and this morning we are going to start with 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. 2 Samuel 7, verse 12. Hallelujah, church. The Bible says, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. And we saw greatly from the beginning of this month how our Father has been teaching us on the word set up. And the word set up also means to be established. It also means to be raised. And one thing, we have so many lessons from the scripture of God, from the word. And your life is festooned by the word of God. Because this is what God has for you this morning. Every body we see in the scripture, we've seen great accounts on how we saw the beginning and the end of a man's destiny. And our father taught us the word of the Lord and he said, for you to be boastful of anything, you can be boastful of anything when you know the end from the beginning. When you know the end from the beginning. And it's so easy to know the end right from the beginning. As we continue to receive the word of the Lord, because we are made by the word of the Lord. So everything that we define our lives, everything that we characterize our lives, is the word of God. And thank God for the word of God. Thank God for what Jesus did on the cross. So that we can know the end from the beginning. Thank God for his death on the cross. Because when he died, we have eternal life. We have everlasting life. We don't have to think about where we are going to when we are no more on this earth. We know that we have eternal life. We have everlasting life. We know that we are going to meet the Father. Hallelujah. We are sure of our salvation. Because Christ died for you and I. Because Christ has paid the price. Hey, he has made us to see the end right from the beginning. He has died, oh, Makabayarabashata. You know, my son was asking me and say that, will Christ, you know, he was saying that, what do we do in Easter? I said, Christ dies for us. He now said that we Christ have to die again, this year again. I said, no, he has died. He has died once and for all. Can you say once and for all? Once and for all. But today is just a day of remembrance of the significance of the death of Jesus. And Jesus died. He died for, for the babies that are yet to be formed in the womb. He died for little children. He died for grown hopes. He died for old people. He died for everybody in the world. And we are boastful of the eternal life we have in Christ Jesus. Pastor Mo told us, he, he taught us the word of the Lord. And he said that we should not suffer for the things that Christ has died for. And I've come to you this morning under the anointing and the protocol and the grace of our Father. We should not suffer for the things that Jesus has died for. Oh, I don't know what to do. If they ask you any question, I don't know. I don't know. No, you know something. You know what to do. 
You're not the end of that school. You're not the end of that business. You're not the end of that career. You're not just there and like, I'm just a worker in my organization. You don't know the end. Oh, madaba, shatala, badabayata. You are there because you're not the end of that organization. And it will now make you so boastful. It will make you to know the end from the beginning. And our God is ancient of days. Our God is timeless. And Father always think, you are timeless, ageless, unhand in love. God is ageless, he's timeless. But we, we are timed. We have limited time to be used in this world. How do you want to use it? Or how are you using it right now? When we are long gone, what would you be recognized for? What would you be known for? You are in this world as every one of us celebrate Jesus. The whole world, everywhere in the world, we celebrate Jesus right now. You also will be celebrated in Jesus' name. And your celebration will not be for your lifetime. Your celebration will be till eternity. Can you say your loudest amen? amen. So we are on earth. Because we know the beginning and the end of our destiny. We know what we come out of our lives. We know the men we are raising right now. We know that we are sent to this world to take this world and we should give it back to God. We know. We know. We saw the life of Samuel, how that he was offered right from childhood unto the Lord. And here you are in church, in the service, doing the work of the Lord. We will be known forever. Our generation will be known forever. Our generations to come will be known forever. Our generations to generations to generations will be known forever in the name of Jesus. Whenever anybody celebrates birthday in what sanctuary and we greet the person happy birthday, we also say, may your years of influence be a thousand be a thousand years do you know the meaning it will be forever it will be forever it will be for eternal it will be for everlasting to everlasting because he, because he that is everlasting is in you so tell me what will you do that will not be everlasting Everything you lay your hands, hands forth as from now is everlasting. So you need to be mindful of the things you lay your hands on right now. You need to be conscious. You need to be deliberate about the things you lay your hands on right now. Because whatever you lay your hands right now, because we've been backed by the anointing of the Lord inside of us. We saw last week how that Israel did not have to fight with sword. But the hand of the Lord was just moving. And before you know it, they prevailed. The same way you will prevail. Because the hand of the Lord is on you. And is moving you right now. So you have to be conscious of the things you do. You have to be deliberate of the things you do. You do the kingdom work. This is the time for you to do it and take it to the next level. This is the time for you to do it and get the best result out of it. This is the time for you to do it. And the kind of results you are going to get, it should be the results that you should be reckoned with forever. You are not small. Say to yourself, I am not small. Anytime I hear the word greatness, Inside of me, I am crazy. Like, <clears throat> the, the greatness. You talk about greatness? Whatever they say greatness is. Whatever greatness is, 
All I know about my destiny is that what? I am great. I am so great. I am very great. The same way you are great. You are very great. You are so great. You are great. You are great. Greatness is in you. In Psalm 90 verse, let's start from verse 1. Psalm 90 verse 1. Verse 1. The Bible says, Lord, thou art been our dwelling place in all generations. In all. Hey, abide as we receive the word of the Lord to dwell, to stay. The next verse. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou art formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. God from everlasting to everlasting. God is in you. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The one that is greater is right inside of you. So everything you do is everlasting. Everything you do is eternal. And I said, that is why you have to be mindful of whatever you do at this point. Because it's forever. Whether good or bad, it will be forever. Look at what Lucifer did. Till today, we all know Lucifer. Look at what Jesus did. Till today, we celebrate Jesus. What are you doing right now? Or what are, what are you doing right now? Or what will you do? Whatever you do right now will determine. It goes a very, very long way in our destiny. It goes a very, very long way in our life. If we look at the life of Joshua, which we read last week, we read from Joshua 24, verse 15. We're not going there right now. But you see, if you read from chapter 1, God wanted to use Joshua. And he was saying, Lord, I'm a child. Lord, I, what, what do I have to say? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You might be thinking about your age presently. You might be thinking that I'm just five years. I'm just 10 years. I'm just 15 years old. I'm just 20 years. I'm just 30. I'm just 50 years old right now. You might be thinking. But God says he wants to use you and is deliberate about it. God says he wants to use you to take the word and is deliberate about it. So no matter your age right now, whatever God says about your destiny is coming to pass. Whatever God says about your life is coming to pass. And that is why your relationship with God is the most important thing in your life. Don't let anything, anybody take away your relationship away from God. God is always speaking. Oh, thank you, Lord, for life class. I could remember before I had the knowledge of life class. You know, back then, especially um, the topic on how God speaks. You know, back then, we do say, something is telling me. In your river, it says, can you come so for me? Can you come so for me? And anytime you want to communicate with people, you will make it of that word. Can you come so for me? But thank God for life class. It is not can you come that is suffering you. Thank God for life class. It is not something that is telling me. But it is the spirit of the Lord that is right inside of you. That is telling you to do whatever that you are being told to do. So don't doubt whatever comes from your spirit. Because it's coming from above. It's coming from the Lord. As you hear it, do it. As you hear it, take step. As you hear it, accomplish it. As you hear it, let it come into reality. Because it is the spirit of the Lord that is right inside of you that is leading you. And we are being taught in life class on how God speaks. God speaks every time. We are being taught that it is we that we are not listening. But thank God for life class. We listen whenever God speaks. 
Thank God for life class. We know when God is the one that is speaking. Can you say hallelujah? Thank God for life class. We are not in the level whereby we begin to doubt. Just like Thomas. He did not believe. Jesus had to come down. Jesus had to show him. He could not believe. He could not believe. As many people do not believe in the word right now. Jesus is using you to make them believe in him. Can you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Jesus is using your life to make them see. Jesus is using your life to make them see him. To make them believe in Jesus. To make them know that yes, they are leaders. To make them know that yes, they are in church. Is using you right now. So let's go to that Joshua, Joshua 24 from verse um, 15. Joshua 24, 15. The Bible says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, that were in the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land he dwell, but as for me, oh Makabayaraba Shata, see the way Joshua is speak with boldness. The same Joshua that was timid. The same Joshua that said, oh, Lord, I don't, I'm, 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 I'm a child. Your Lord, I cannot be in charge right now. Lord, I cannot be the CEO of the company right now. Lord, I cannot be the, 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 the manager of the company right now. Who, who, oh my God, who say so? He said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You go and make your decisions. I have made my decision. I have made my decision to serve the Lord with boldness. I have made my decision to work for the Lord. I have made my decision to proclaim the gospel. I have made my decision to be blessed. I have made my decision to be the multi, multi whatever that cannot be measured in terms of finances. I have made up my mind. If I say multi multi billionaire right now, you just shout, yeah. But I did not say billion. Because if you have wealth to the point that they don't even, they cannot calculate it, hey, that's it. But if you are now saying billion, ah, it's, it's calculated right now. And that is why it is, they know it is in billions. Ah, we still look at the life of, of, of Solomon. How that he offers sacrifices. One time in one of our meetings, we were now told, okay, how much are they selling? Maybe when we get there, we are going to talk about it. But before that, let's go to um, Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 1. Hmm. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Alkiah, of the priests that were in Hanotot, in the land of Benjamin. The next verse. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. You see, the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Hey, hey, in the 13th year of his reign. The next verse. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, as the word of the Lord is coming to you this morning, the next verse, before I found thee, in the belly I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I separated thee. I have chosen you. Kingdom of kings and priests. 
You've been chosen. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are peculiar. We've been separated. You've been separated for the Lord's use. I have separated thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You've been ordained. Thank God for the teaching of the word of the Lord. A lot of people have the mindset according to what they were taught in their churches. We all cannot be pastors. Says who? Read your scriptures. We've been made kings and priests. We've been ordained. Ah, you are a pastor. Oh, no, just call me by name. My name is okay. I don't call me pastor. You are a pastor. You've been ordained. Some people will say that, you know, you know, they, 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 we've not been ordained. They've not poured oil on me. You've been ordained. Your children have been ordained. Your generation, no, everybody in the world, we've been ordained. Everyone. Everyone is because of their ignorance. That is why they are living in ignorance. And that is why they are saying what they are saying. But thank God because we have the word of the Lord inside of us. We are full of the word. We have the knowledge of the word of God. Because the Bible says grow in grace and in knowledge of the word of God. And we grow every time. And as we grow, we know that we are being ordained. Can you face your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are ordained. Ah, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. The next verse. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Ah, I cannot preach. Ah. I was in a place with some people one day and I told the person, you will be the one that will share what the person said, eh? And the person is not part of us in church. The person said, ah, he, ah, ah, no, ah, we, we don't do that though. Ah, ah. I said, is no she, like you be the one to sh no share word. Oh, but can you say hallelujah? La baraba shata. Oh, makabaya raba shata. If you are given the prayer to share word, in fact, 24 hours is not even enough. Can you say amen? amen? It's true. I could remember back then, diamond ladies back then, now kingdom fathers and mothers. Our mother, we, we take us out there, all the ladies, in fact, and it actually used to be during this period, during Easter period, we go, we come back on a Thursday or the good, yes, on a Thursday or the good Friday in the morning. Our father, our mother, we come teaching us the word of the Lord, you know, you know, teaching, dissecting the word, giving it to us. And we also, we were receiving the word of the Lord. Ha, we use one hour, we use two hours, we use three hours, you use four hours. Our mother will say, I am still at the introduction. Everybody will shout, hey? Ah, introduction. Ah, three hours receiving the word of the Lord. But can you say thank you, Jesus? Because those words, it has made us. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. If you are still at the introduction for the past three hours, please, how much more the word of God? Ah, the in-depth of the word of God. I, I said, I, 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 I told myself then, I said, okay, no problem. That time, I was just a worker. I was not even an executive. I said, we just keep on receiving the word of God. No problem. That point, I now told myself, I, I, I told myself, I asked myself, I said, ah, ah, if I'm the one, they said, I should come and share one now. Ah, one hour. Even that one hour self is even just too much. Ah, ah, 
I, I told myself, I, I remember those words clearly. I remember the venue. I remember the pills, the, the pills we were sitting on. I could remember everything. I told myself, I said, if mother can do it, I told myself, I said, I can do it. If mother will say that she's using three hours for introduction, I said, I will be able to use the same three hours for introduction. And we kept on rising and rising and rising and rising in the word of the Lord. Right now, we can use 24 hours to preach and you will not even feel it. Can you celebrate the Lord? Because I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm also speaking about your life. Right now, you can have a scripture right now. And before you know it, the Spirit of the Lord will just link you. Ah, kabayarabashata. It will just tell you another scripture. And by the time you read it, it's in line. And from one verse, ah, from one verse, you have a lot of revelation from a verse. I was having mentoring class with one of my mentees and we're looking at the book of Proverbs and we, we were looking at it one after the other, one verse, and we were on a particular verse, just talking, looking at the scripture, you know, teaching. Ah, honestly, both of us did not know when it was already above, when it was one hour above. On a verse. He said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. You are not a child, church. We are not babes. Hey, we are grown up. We are not one that is being fed with milk, but we are being fed with strong meat. Can somebody say strong meat? The next verse. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. The same way as the Lord is talking to Jeremiah, the same way he's saying, Say not, you are not a child. You are not a child, church. No matter your level of leadership right now, maybe you're even coming to church for the first time, you are not a child in things that are pertaining to the kingdom of the Lord. You are not a child in your place of work. You are not a child in your business. You are not a child in your family. You are looking at yourself. Maybe you are even the last born and you are just a, a certain age and your firstborn is already 40 years of age or your firstborn is already 50 years of age but the word god has released the word into your mouth why can't you open up your mouth and start saying those words because you are not a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee as we have been sent we've been sent to take the word and to give it back to god and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. You see? Don't bother of whatever you have to say. Don't, you don't need to think about it. Hey! The next verse. Be not afraid of their faces. La ba la ba la ba shata la ba ya. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord is with you. In fact, is in you. He's in you. Don't be afraid of the environment. Don't be afraid of the people around. Don't be afraid that ah, I have um, presidents around me. I have senators. I have the, 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 the Amias. I have great people. I have you no know, great people all around me. You are great. And that is why you are qualified to be there. God is in you. He's in you, church, the next verse. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. 
The same way God is touching your mouth right now. Church, God is touching your mouth right now. You might think that you are in that faculty or in that department whereby all you have to do is just for you to attend lectures and to go out of that department. No, you are there because God has touched your mouth because he has put words inside of you. And touch my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. So church, go forth to do whatever God tells you to do. Go forth. This is your confidence. This is your boldness. This is your confidence that you have. That the word of the Lord is in me. My mouth is anointed. I say whatever God wants me to say. I do whatever God wants me to do. I go to places God wants me to go. I meet the people God wants me to meet. The next verse. See, I have this day set thee. I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. This word is for us this morning. God has set every one of us over nations. Wait. Are you not sure? Are you thinking? Are you thinking? Because it is nations. And if you are not thinking, then I need a confirmation. Are you timid? Are you shy? Are you scared? Then if you are not scared, let me have your confirmation. God said, I have set thee over nations. And over the kingdoms. Over the kingdoms in the world, every part of the world, God said that he has set you there. He has put you there. He has given you the world. He has given you the mantle. He has given you the assignment. He has given you the boldness. He has given you the greatness. What is it that you want? It has been given to you. Yes. To root out Labarabashata. Never will nothing work again in my hands. Whatever you lay your hands upon us from this time, because this is a month of setup, I declare that they are working in Jesus' name. He has given us the power to root out and to pull down whatever that needs any pulling down in any area, in any home, in any nation, in any business, in every place of work that is not making things to function, that is not making things to work right. I declare by the spirit and the anointing of the Lord inside of you, they have been pulled down in the name of Jesus. And to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Jesus said that he came not to kill, but he came to give life, and to give life in abundance. The abundance life has been released to you, and the life of God that you have in abundance in your life, you are using it to get results in the name of Jesus. You can go back to that John Tainton. We are here for a serious business. The kingdom of God is not joke. 
hey, hey. No, go back to that same reference scripture, John 10. 10. It's not a joke. La ba da ba da ba shata. The Bible says the thief commit not, but to steal la ba da ba ya. And to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life. And that they might have it more abundantly. The devil thinks he can take this word. The devil thinks he can make use of the social media. Thank God. Can you celebrate WSD for that great ministration? <laughs> the devil thinks he can make use of other platforms to take people away from Christ. La ba da ba da ba shata. No. 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 Hey, we are alive in Christ Jesus. Because we are, you are not of the first Adam. You are of the second Adam. You are of Jesus. And the life is in you. You, we are, we are on earth right now to take this world and to give it back to God. We are on earth right now to save everyone. We are on earth right now to show people the way, the truth, and the life. We are on earth right now to propagate the kingdom of God. To propagate the kingdom of God. The kingdom, the, the kingdom of God. I'm hearing this over and over in my spirit, and I'm going to say it for the sake of the people that we watch this service years to come. You call yourself a Christian, but whenever you are out there, you are not bold as a Christian to come out. You cannot even say it boldly with your mouth, I'm a Christian. Your appearance, your appearance does not even show that you are a Christian. Nothing. But it's you. God wants to use. Is you God wants to use to change everything in this world. To change it. Those platforms, we have those platforms to proclaim the gospel. Church, let us be deliberate about it. Let us go all loud, like talk, like say words, say kingdom words into the in. People are using it for something else and they are getting their own result the way they are using it. It's time, church. It's time, Christians. Let's take it for the Lord. We were praying on Facebook till we were banned because we were praying for the kingdom. Let us display, like, let us take over every, everything called social media. It's time to go and open account on all and begin to propagate, begin to dominate, begin to, to dominate. Let's go back to our main scripture. The next verse, verse 11. He says, I am the good shepherd. No, Jeremiah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, 
what seeth thou? As the word of the Lord is coming to you this morning, what are you seeing, church? What are you seeing? And I said, I see a road of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou art well seen. What are you seeing right now? In your spirit. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, what are you seeing right now? Share it with your neighbor. Because whatever you are seeing right now, yes, you've seen well. Because you are not using your normal eyes to see. You are using your spiritual eyes, the eyes of the spirit to see. You are using God's eyes. You know, you cannot even be old because it's burning. It's shining. So whatever that you are seeing right now, it's not normal. Because you are seeing well. Then, the scripture now says, For I will hasten my word to perform it. So can you say, neighbor? Whatever you, uh, you saw right now, it's coming to pass. Right now. Right now. I mean right now. Because you've seen well. Hey, la ba da ba da ba shata. When Jesus did that blind man, he said, I, I, saw, I saw men walking as trees. No. This is not us. We see well. To take the word, we see well. To take the economy of the word, we see well. To take the government of the world, we see well. To be president, for you to be president of the nation, you see well. For you to be ministers, amen, of this country, you are seeing well. For those of you that you have the mind of government, get ready. The anointing that is released on you right now. And the position, the doors are being opening. The seats are open right now. So go forth. Go forth. You are not in any party right now. Amen? Join one. If you want to have your own party, start one. Because we've seen well. This is the word of the Lord for us. And for those of you in business, you want to start a company? You want to start a factory? You want to have an industry? La ba da ba da ba da ba. It's happening right now. Because the anointing has been released on you right now. And the ability for you to make it happen, it has been given to you. Amen. Maybe you're even thinking, ah, me, I'm just into buying and selling right now. The buying and selling you are into right now, get ready because you are doing business in great waters. Because that's what the scripture says. And if you do business in great waters, what does it mean? You are importing and exporting. So get ready. Oh my God, your business is now an international business. Get ready. Don't say, what do I have? Uh, look at my place of work, just a container. Yes, that's in that container. Don't be ashamed to say I am in a container. Because your future is not container. The future of that business is not, is not a kiosk. It's not wood. Your future is to take over the economy of the world. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. If a man is timid, if you are timid, you are scared, you don't longer know your assignment. If a man is timid, you are not in your assignment. Once you know your assignment, you know what to do, you know what you are in for. Ah, shyness. It's not you. Shyness is not who you are. I give God praise for my life because before I joined church, you know, I am so shy. I can't talk. In fact, I don't talk. Amen? If you tell me, sit down there, that's where I will be. Don't say anything. I will not say anything. But when I receive the word of the Lord, and it's time for me to proclaim the word of the Lord, la ba da ba da ba shata. Yes, I have the boldness. Once you know your assignment, you are bold. Once you know your assignment, you are bold. Once you know your assignment on this earth, you are bold. Once you know your assignments in whatever you are into, you are bold. If you, if we look at the life of Simon Peter, he denied Jesus. Ah, he was part of them. Me? Ah, no, no, oh, no. The young damsels says, Ah, we used to see him follow. He is part of the disciples. He quickly, oh yeah, escaped. Hey, la ba da ba da ba da ba shata. But in Acts two, when they were all in one accord on the day of Pentecost, and they began to pray, and the spirit of the Lord descended on them, and they began to speak in other tongues. In fact. The whole country, they were like, oh, what is happening right there? What is going on right there? Look at them. They are speaking in, in another man's language. Look at them. Hear what they are saying. Oh, my God. Peter that denied Jesus. Peter that was timid. With, with boldness, Peter faced them and said, in Acts 2, From verse 14. Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Hey, huh. is she, <laughs> no, at this point, Jesus was not on the head again. It's not time for the disciples. It's time for them. You know why Jesus was still around? They could not pray with Jesus. They could not watch with Jesus. But when the reality came on them, hey, they had to face it. When you are in your assignment, when you are in the place of reality, when you know what to do, when you know the reason you are there, you will face and do it with everything you can do it with. He lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken. As you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what this, but this is that which was spoken by the prophets. The boldness came on him and he began to quote, he began to, scream, to, to quote scripture, to say the word of the Lord. No matter whatever you are in right now, when the boldness is on you, you will face it. No matter challenges, you have right now, when the boldness is on you, you are going to face it. You will not run away from it because that is where your glory is. 
Has we been taught the word of God? If there are no challenges, there will not be glory. If you don't want to face those challenges, you will not have glory. Face the challenges, brother. Face it head on. And you see yourself overcome. You see yourself victorious at the end. The next verse. And it shall come to pass in the last day, say God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. With boldness. We are in the season. We need to do things with boldness. The people out there of the world, amen, they don't care. They go all out to do whatever they want to do. So far, they have it in their mind. It has to be done. Let's walk with the spirit of our father. Our father will say, if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Say to yourself, if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. If I say I'm going to do it, look at the way you're even saying it. I'm my God, you're not even saying it with conviction right inside. Do you, are you sure you want to do something? So say it with confirmation. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I will get the best results. Can you shout hallelujah? The same way Esther, do you think you're in the, in the kingdom? Do you think you're in the palace? A message was just sent and once the king authorized the thing, we are gone. Mordecai told Esther, don't think you'll be left out. Don't run from it because whether you like it or not, you will still face it. Don't run from any challenges. Don't run from any problem. Don't run from any situation. Don't run from your goals. You know, why did you say it at first? A decree was being sent that they will kill all the Jews, all, everyone. No one will be left behind. And you are there for that purpose. And if you will not do it, it will still be done. But it's just that it's you that, God, it's you that made yourself not to be available. Because God is interested in the life of every man. No one is excluded. Then he will make it of the man that is available. Ha! At that point, he said, okay, let everybody fast. I will also fast. Everyone that I have with me in the palace, we are going to fast also. And the king was in the court whereby if you are not invited, you cannot enter. But Queen Hester, because of the assignment, because of the purpose, he was just walking in front of the court, up and down, walking all around, hmm, pacing, labadaba shatter. I knew at that point what was going on in her mind was a him, a purpose of what she wanted the king to do. That was what was in her mind. What do you want to do? What do you have in your mind right now? And I'm sure as you are thinking about those things, you're not just thinking about it alone. You are also, you know, muttering tongues in your mouth. You are muttering, oh, shut up, because of the things I want to do right now. Because the Jews must not be killed. Ah, no. Our entire generation will not be wiped away. No. No. 
no, no. Ah, and the king now saw her. La. The king just stretched forth his scepter, meaning a sign of acceptance. A sign of acceptance that you can enter. And she entered. And she was able to tell the king all her requests. And everything was granted to her. Assuming Esther was not bold enough to face it. We would have had another story today. The same way, if you look at the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we will not serve any other God. We will not bow to your God. We will serve the living God. The same way Joshua was born and said, and he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Nothing will take the gospel away from my mouth. Nothing will take the meditation of the scripture away from me. Nothing will take my tongue away from my mouth. Nothing. With boldness, they face the king. With boldness, they face the king, church. They face the king, and we read how that the kingdom, how the kingdom has been delivered to us. So get ready because you are standing, you are going to stand in front of great people. And because God has touched your mouth, he will, you know the right thing to say. You will not say what will make them to go and lock you up. Because ha, ah, because you are being sent by God. You are being sent. If you look at the life of, uh, of Apostle Paul with boldness, he doesn't care whether you're a Gentile, you're a Jew, or what, what, what no, no. Whether you're circumcised or you are not, he kept on proclaiming the, the, the gospel. He kept on winning souls. He kept on establishing churches. With the boldness because of the assignment, he kept on. He kept on saving souls. He was not stopped by anybody. And today, Apostle Paul, is more relevant than the disciples. Today, Apostle Paul established churches than the disciples. Today, Apostle Paul has followers, disciples everywhere in the world. Today, we can read of the epistles. Today, today, Apostle Paul is relevant. Today, you are relevant. Today, you proclaim the word of God. Today, with boldness, you do whatever you want to do. Some of you, God is telling you, starting an installation. And this is the amount of setup. Why can't you walk to the central, to the head of central churches and share your revelation? That's in person of Pastor Moyo Mole. And share your revelation of what God is telling you. Some of you, God is telling you to start a, a prayer fellowship in your hostel. I could remember one time in Malete, there's a particular hostel beside the church. That year, some people at night, they will gather together. And, you know, the hostel, it has different rooms, but in a compound. So a particular place, Lada Bashata, in that compound, they pray there, and they have good time. They, they do devotion, night devotion there. Sir, brothers and sisters, <laughs> in the Lord, that very year, majority of our members in the church came from that hostel. And today, we are fruits of the hostel. We are fruits 
of the prayer section that was being made by some folks. I expect you to celebrate the Lord for that. Because today, some of them are now assistant HOD today. Some of them are HOD today as I'm speaking. But God spoke to one of us as God is also speaking to you today. God is even telling some of you to be praying together as home with your family. And if luckily for you, it's a kind of family that they don't even pray at all. There's no altar. There's no family altar at all in that family. It's you. God is using right now. Don't let anything stop you. Hey, yes, I could remember. One of us also in Ikwasu. Anytime they're on holiday, she goes back home. She gathers everybody in the family, the old devotion. She shared the word of the Lord. They pray. By the time she went back to, to her parents' church, she did not just attend the church over there. When it's time for the word of the Lord, who is going to share what today? I will. She took up the privilege, the platform, the advantage to proclaim the word of God. They asked her, uh-uh. these things you are saying, where did you get them from? Ah, your grace cannot end in this classroom or in this um, youth section or and they gave I again slots to come and preach the word of God in the church. I expect you to celebrate God also for this. It started from the heart. Your mind is the most important part. It's the most important tool you have. Because whatever you do, whatever, you, as you are sitting down right now, you have it in your mind that, yes, I'm sitting. If you want to stand up right now, you've thought about it that, okay, let me stand up. The same way as God is instructing you and is placing things in your heart, do them. Do them. As you can lift up your hands, as you are jotting right down, you are writing, it came to your heart, your mind. Ah, just that. You need it. You need that one right now. Just it right now. The same way. It's not a big thing. For those that does not know when God speaks. For those, for those that does not know. They will say, ha. Ah. Let's just continue. One of our new folks also in the church, she came to me. This lady, she said, I attended to her as a first time guest. So she started coming to church, started coming to church. There was a time she saw me. She said, I don't know. Whenever I pray, I don't feel anything. I just talk. I don't even know if God has answered or not. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do. I told the lady, life class. Start life class. I told the lady what to do. Thank God for the word of God. Now, this lady, she's on fire. She's on fire. This lady leads songs in the church whereby everybody in the church participates as she leads songs. God is telling you the things to do in your department. In your department, other religion, anywhere you go to, you will see stones all around Christians, church, it's time for the church to wake up. There should be altar everywhere. God's altar everywhere in your home. Altar. And it has to keep on burning. It has to keep on burning. As you make prayers, as you sing, as you share the word, that is how you can make it burning. It has to continue. 
It has to keep on burning and burning and burning and burning. You're in, that, in your department. Gather the Christians. Tell them there's a fellowship. Tell them that it's time to pray. Tell them that God is telling you about their destiny. A lot of Christians does not know what their life will be. They lo- a lot of Christians does not know how they are, they, they are going to end their life. A lot of Christians does not even know the next step to take. A lot of Christians, they don't know what next to do. They just know that they are just in, in, in school. And after school, I will go for NYC, NYC. A lot of Christians does not even know what to do after NYC. A lot of Christians does not know. It's you. God is using to take the advantage, to take the privilege and set altars on NYC campground everywhere in Nigeria. Anywhere you have been posted to, gather Christians. Yes, we have NCCF. That doesn't stop. That doesn't stop. It doesn't stop you. Because, if, because also on the campground, when it's on, on, on Sunday, church is to come around and you are the maybe you are even the only what Sandra member on that campground. Ah, it's, it's, it's time to work, brother. It's time for you to work, sister. Go start, go to ourselves. Call people, follow me to church. Let's go to church. Ah, what's the name of your church? I have no idea. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's time for church. Call people. A lot of them does not even go to church. Go to their room, go sell, call, call. You no, know, raise disciples in no time. Gather, pray. What sanctuary? Amen. You get there, you, 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 you pray, you share the word of the Lord, you take them life classes, you, you, oh my God, you prophesy to their destiny, you tell them the next thing of their life, the next, the, the next thing of their, of their destiny. Their assignment, their purpose, why they're on earth, you give it to them. Tell me if they will not answer you when next you call them. They will. They will. Set up altars. Set up. Our month set up altars everywhere in faculties, in schools, on campuses, in your, in your community. Ah, ah, ah. On my way home on Friday, we passed through a particular place. I saw a mox and I saw light. I look at the time. Time has gone now. Most times, once they are done with their prayer, that's it. Light was on. Immediately, I just remember when Father said that each mox has a man. In fact, each community, there is an imam. So, Christians, hey, we take the word. See, gather your community together. House fellowship, amen? Set up altars. Call Christians. I know you've gone to church today. You know today, you know, Sunday evening. Call people. Go to your neighborhood. Gather them together. As the Lord has set in your heart. As he has placed it in your heart. When a man begins everything he does with God, he will be very likely to do well in the, in the length. When a man begins everything he does with God, he will be very likely to do well. Be very, very likely to do well. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 1, First Kings chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until, until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places. Because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord unto those days. 
And Solomon loved the Lord. Can you see? Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statute of David's father. Only a sacrifice. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer unto that altar. Verse 5. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. I said it earlier. I said, I will talk about it. When I was talking about um, finances, if you say that I'm operating in billions, it means that what? It can still be calculated. I said it earlier. I said, when one of our meetings, and in the meeting, we're now told that, okay, he made sacrifices. Go to verse 4. Verse 4. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings. A thousand burnt offerings. Okay. So assuming it was bullock, he sacrificed. How much are they selling a cow right now? 500,000? 400,000, right? Sir? From 500 upwards, right? We can still get more than that. So if we now took our calculator, we tried to calculate, 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 and we press enter. Amen. What the calculate, calculator of this trade was what? Error. Error. And this happened in the time of King Solomon. Thank God for today's uh, ministration from WSD. And we saw how that the brother gave everything he had. Ah, he gave everything he had. Yes, because he, 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 can, he had seen the end. Amen? He had seen the end right from the beginning. And that is why, and that was why he had to give everything. You think that you are paying dues right now. Amen? It is actually the end of your destiny. And that is why you don't have to joke with your dues. How much dues are we giving to the Lord? You know, King Solomon, you know, the, okay, King David was the one that said, I will, I be living in an expensive house and there is no house that is being built for the Lord. Then God told him, he said that your son will be the one that will build a house for me. And God told me, he said, King David was able to recognize the need in the house of God. Don't just come to church or don't just be in church and you cannot recognize anything that is needed in the house of God. The chair you are sitting on right now is relevant in the house of God. Because it is accommodating you to, to sit on it. It is accommodating you to receive the word of the Lord. How much more you that you are sitting on the chair? Which you have to be relevant to this word. He could recognize the need. We all have to recognize the need. This year we are building, amen? We are building our campground. Can you celebrate the Lord for that? Yes, there is need. David made the preparation for the house of the Lord. You are here right now to make the preparations for the building. As we build men, we raise men, Amen. We build the campground. We provide the materials needed. Can you celebrate the Lord for the church in Abuja? Because the church in Abuja started this morning. <laughs> celebrate because the nations and the kingdom has been given to us. A lot 
has been spent and still spending. It has been spent. Ensure you give. I said it last week. Give for the purpose. And thank God. I received some messages how some, some of us gave to us. But don't stop there. Continue. Continue. Continue giving to the Lord. So if you look at, we've seen the life of King Solomon and we saw that King Solomon began with God. He began with God and he prospered so quickly and early. Whatever you do or whatever you are doing right now and you begin that thing with God. It will prosper. In fact, it has prospered. It has prospered. So the reign of Solomon was with a purpose. The reign of Solomon was with a purpose, which was for him to build a house. In First Chronicles 22 verse 5. Which was for him to build. To build. The Bible says, and David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnificent. You see? And that is why whatever you have to do must be great. Amen. Amen. It must be successful. Exceeding magnificent of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. We are on earth right now. And as we are on earth, we are also preparing. Amen. We are preparing ourselves abundantly. Because of the taking of the word. Because of the taking of the word. Money is always easy to come by for people who are purpose driven. It's always easy for someone who has purpose to have money. When I was HOD of Ushering department, which was my first department I added as HOD, when I became HOD. God told me at that point, he said, when you have projects, you have more money. If you don't have projects, you will not have money. If you have things to do, the money will come. You don't have the money right now. It's because what you want to do, you don't have it inside of you. Whatever you want to do and you have it inside of you, my God, it should be provided for. Look at the word provision. Pro, P-R-O. Remove it. We are left with what? Vision. You have a vision, whatever that is needed in the vision will be provided. In fact, it has been provided for. All what you have to do is just for you to set your heart on it. As you are being told by God, you are being led by God, set your heart on it. Get into prayers before you know it. God will begin, he will begin to tell you how to go about it. And one of our prayer, um, World Nation prayer meetings, our father taught us, he said, he taught us about the power of God for finances. 
He taught us about the power of God for financing. And he said there are two specific. Two. Number one, purpose. Number two, drive. When you have purpose, you will be driven. When you don't have purpose for anything, you can never be driven. The purpose comes before the drive. The purpose comes before the drive. If you are, if you have the purpose, you will be driven. And our father said, he said, when you have purpose, the purpose will make you more of a learner. Because you just keep on getting knowledge, getting information on how to do that thing, on how to get results, on how to do it better. On how to make it happen. On how to make things happen. And our father taught us in Wealth Nation prayer meeting, and that is why these meetings are so important for our destinies. You, they are not me meetings you should miss at all. Our father now told us, he told us that a person who does not have passion to succeed, we have passion to fail. A person who does not have passion to succeed, we have passion to fail. So you need to have urgency in your drive for success. You need to have urgency in your drive for prosperity. And there was a particular point also in World Nation prayer meeting, I thought I taught us on targets. And I could remember that World Nation meeting. The prayer meeting. Because our father will first teach us the word of God. And after the teaching of the word of God, then we pray. We declare those words into manifestation. Our father now taught us on targets. And he spoke to, to, to those that are in so business. So I told myself, I set a target for myself. I said, in a particular week, I will do a certain number. In a week. At the end of the month, when I times it, this is the number I would have done. I set that target. Church, I was able to meet up with that target. I said, now, this is working. I now, so what I got in a month, now, I now set the target. That's in business. I did it for business. I, I applied this in business. The target I got at the end of that month now is now my weekly target. So what I will do for 26 days will be done for 6 days. Based on what? There is a purpose. I have targets. I am driven. My heart is set to it. This thing must work. The same way you know your number in your department. You are 10 in that department. Don't leave the work to the head of the department alone. It must concern you. As a member of that department. Oh, by next Saturday, in our next departmental meeting, we are 10 presently. But by next week, each person should bring one person. Making how many? 20. You have 20? That 20, let everybody bring one. Making how many? 40. Church, within a month, it's possible for your department, for you to have 50 members in that department. Two things that we're taught in training as we begin to close. And we were taught that two things will speak for you and it will make you relevant as a leader. 
and I want you to write this. Number one, the total number of people you are leading. Apply this principle to whatever you are doing. Church, business, results. Apply it. You get it. The total number of people you are leading, number one. Number two, and the amount of money you are able to control. Once you have a great number and you have great finances, you are a success. You are great. Greatness is who you are. Greatness is you. It's not part of you. It is you. They call you. As they call you, they are seeing what? Greatness. They are seeing greatness in you. They are seeing greatness in you. Why? Because whatever you do, you approach it with confidence. You approach whatever you do with boldness. The same way we read how that Jesus entered the most holy place with what? With boldness. Go with that strength. Today is the 31st day of the month. By tomorrow, the 1st. This service is for you. Because as you enter a new day tomorrow, amen, you enter into greatness. Your plan, Madabashata. The Spirit of the Lord said I should tell you that there are some of you that now is the time for you to set weekly goals, weekly goals targets. The things you want to do, now is the time. He now said there are some of you that now is the time for you to set daily targets. Like, before the end of today, I must have have this. Before the end of today, I must have done this. Before the end of the week, I must have achieved this. And as you do it, oh my God, the beauty that our Father has proclaimed on us from the, from the year, the month, it taught us on festoon. The beauty will begin to radiate in our lives. To radiate in our lives. Let's go back to First Kings 3. And quickly to verse 6. Because the Lord told him to act. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked. Can you see? He walked before thee. See, God first. God number one. Everything about your life, God. As you are eating, was it God that told you to eat? As you, before you go out, okay, did God tell me to go to this place I want to go? Everything about your life, God. Because it will make our greatness, it will make us to reign in time, amen? We reign in time and we also reign for long. Can you shout hallelujah? <laughs> Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. The next verse. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out, look at the word of King Solomon, or come in, verse 8, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. A great people. You are in the midst of great country. Amen? Nigeria is great. Hallelujah. No matter what is happening right now in the country, Amen? Nigeria is, America is, Africa is, Australia is, 
Every country is because you are in the midst of the great people. That cannot be numbered, you see, nor counted for multitude. The next verse. Give therefore thy servants an understanding as to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Next verse. And the speech please the Lord. That Solomon had asked this thing. The next verse. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked these things, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thy enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. The next verse. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding as can you say amen? amen so that there was none like thee before thee there will not be anybody like you say amen, amen. why because for some of told us on, on he came on friday and he taught us how that we are meant to be made the person amen god made us amen that we are not meant to live our lives. Maybe we are now copying other or no, 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 no. There will not be anybody that will be like you in the name of the Lord. You know, it does not amount to God anything to make every one of us to have greatness. And each person's greatness, they are great, significant, they are they are different, but it is what? Greatness. It doesn't amount to God anything. Thus here, the Spirit of the Lord is making you to be different. He's making you to be great. He said, there will not be any, there was none like thee before thee. There will not be anybody. Neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee, as thy days. This is the word of the Lord for us this morning, church. There will not be anybody that will be like you. There will not be anybody that will have the kind of wealth you have. There will not be anybody that will have the kind of leadership you have. There will not be anybody that will have the kind of greatness you have. There will not be anybody that we have the kind of disciples you have. Every one of us, great, special, specific, different, but all in common, greatness. All in common, we take the word. All in common, we take the word. We take the world whole with common. And in this season, as Christ has entered with boldness, I want us to all be on our feet as we are going to pray with the boldness that Christ has released and he has given to us. He entered with boldness to pay the price. He entered with boldness and the veil of the temple torn from bottom up. He entered with boldness and he gave us life. He entered with boldness and he gave us the boldness. He entered with boldness and he gave you confidence. He entered with boldness. He gave you righteousness. He entered with boldness. He gave you power. He entered with boldness. He gave you sound mind. The Bible says for God hath not given us a spirit of fear but of power, 
of love and of a sound mind. And in the book of Proverbs 28, verse 16, B, verse 1b, the Bible says, But the righteous are as bold as a lion. Are you, are you, are you bold with your words this morning? Are you bold? If you are bold with your words this morning, can you begin to declare your words with boldness? Because you are in destiny, in boldness, in destiny you are bold, church. Come on, come on, declare your boldness in destiny. Declare your boldness in riches. Declare your boldness in soul winning. You are bold to be a soul winner. You are bold to be blessed. You are bold to be chosen. You are bold to be called. You are bold to be anointed. You are bold to be to be to be blessed of the Lord. You are bold. You are not timid in prayer. Come on, voice out. Oh Makabayarabashata. Pastor more ready to rust. How that Jesus at the point he has said that he began to pray. Jesus. He's praying right now. Can you join Jesus this morning and begin to pray as you declare the boldness into your life, as you de declare the greatness into your destiny? Oh, la bara bara basha, la bara 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 basha, libra da bara bara basha, libra da bara 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 basha, la bara bara. You are not only a king, you are not only a priest. But you are special. You are divine because of the purpose God has placed in your heart. Because of the assignment God has placed in your heart. La bara 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 Church, your purpose is not just for you to go through school. Your purpose is not just for you to do business. Your purpose is not just for you to get married. Your purpose is not just for you to give birth to children. Your purpose is not just for you to train up kids. That is not who you are. That is not the reason you are born on earth. That is not the reason. Oh, Madabarabarabarabashata. If not, we would not have needed a special attention in heaven. But now, but now, we have to take the word. Now is the time for us to take the world and to give it back to God. Hey, Madabarabarabashata. The attention of heaven is on you, church. The attention of heaven is on you. The attention of heaven is on your destiny. The attention of heaven is on your greatness. The attention of heaven is on your life. La bada 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 the Bible says, speaking in another tongue, in your most holy faith. Can you pray in tongues this morning? Can you command the words that you've received? Can you turn them out? Can you convert them into tongues this morning? Libra da bara bara bashate. Libra da bara 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 bashata la bara 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 bashata. In Jesus' name, afraid. The attention of heaven is on every one of us. The attention of heaven is on you. The attention of, of, of heaven is on us to take the world and to give it back to God. The attention of heaven is on us. This morning, I had a revelation. And in my revelation, I saw everybody. In my revelation, I saw three things. Number one, I saw everybody in the revelation. Number two, I saw our bosses, which is what? Mobility, right? Movement. And lastly, 
I saw us harvesting fruits. And in the harvest of the fruit, I saw different kinds of fruits. And because the attention of heaven is on us, and we know the, the beginning and the end of our life. In this revelation, the Spirit of the Lord said, I should tell us that now is the time of the harvest. And the Spirit of the Lord said, I should tell you that don't doubt about it because you will end well. He said, you will leave this world well. He said, your generation is well. I saw everybody, church folks, everyone, mobility, fruits. And when we are talking about fruits, if you take orange and you drink orange, there are seeds in fruit, right? So as he has released fruit, as he has released harvest, the same way he has also released seed. So, whatever you want to do, the way has been opened. Because the seed has been planted. But we are going to pray right now. I saw mobility. I saw Iveco. We know our, our Iveco boss, one of our bosses. I saw it. And I saw all of us. Right now, the things you want to do, we are going to command the taking of the world. As we take the world as the church, we take the whole world. At the same time, you also command whatever you are into right now. It takes the world. The airways are open to us. The lands are open to us. The seas are open to us. Every part of the whole world, they are being released to us. The nations are being released to us. But right now, because I saw you in my revelation, come on, begin to declare the airways. They are released to you. of the Lord. La boda boda bow shata la bara bara bayara bashate. Libra de bede 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 boda bow shata la bara bayata. Libra de bede 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 shata la bara bara bayate. Oh Lord, we receive the harvest. This morning, we receive the harvest in the name of Jesus. La bara 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 bashate le boda boda bow. Because of what God has placed in your heart, you began to move from place to place, from places to places, in the name of the Lord. Go to Jeremiah. He said, what can you see? What can you see, church? Are you seeing well this morning? Are you seeing well? He said, I saw. The 
to you. Can you see? Can you look to the north in your spirit? Can you look to the south? Can you look to the west? Can you look to the east right now? And begin to see things right now. And as you see them, they are coming to pass. In the name of the Lord. Libra da barabarabashata. Oh la barabarabashata. We are being fired up. We are being stirred up in our spirit. Libra da barabashata. To take this word and give it back to God. We are being stirred up right now. In the name of the Lord. Libra da bashata. Libra da barabashata. La bete 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 bete. Le bodo bara bara bosha, li brada bara 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 bosha, li brada bara bosha, li brada bara 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 bosha, la bara 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 bosha, la bara bara. Oh, come and pray until something happen. Pray until you feel something in your spirit this morning. Li brada bara bara bosha, li brada bara bara bosha, la bara bara. The world is taken in the name of Jesus. We declare expansion in our lives, in our businesses, in our domain, in the name of Jesus. La bada bada bosha, libre de bere 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 Come on, church. Come on, church. Now is the time for the harvest. Now is the time. This is the season of harvest. This is the season of greatness. This is the season of souls that are being won in the name of Jesus. La bada 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 Let's give to the Lord because God has shown us the harvest. We are in the season of harvest. Ensure that you're giving what you are giving God this morning. You are giving Him harvest. Offering harvest time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. La bara basha, la bara 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 basha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest. Thank you for the nation. Thank you for the kingdom. Thank you. Thank you for the world that we've taken. Thank you. Because heaven's attention is on us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you are ready with your seeds, can you please be on your feet? Put your seed on your on your left hand and raise up your right hand. La bashata la barabaya. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we declare this morning. Um, can we have Deuteronomy 28, verse 3 in Hemesh? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I sense prayer. I sense prayer this morning. 
La boda bo shata la bara 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 ba. The Bible says God's blessing inside the city, God's blessing in the country. Can I have any amplified? The Bible says, and this is the word of the Lord to us this morning. Blessed shall you be in the city. And blessed shall you be in the field. And I declare under the protocol and the anointing of our Father, I declare that you are blessed. Your ends are blessed. Your ideas are blessed. Your inspirations are blessed. Your givings are blessed. Your homes are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your sons and daughters are blessed. Your tables are blessed. Your bank accounts are blessed. I declare your businesses are blessed. Whatever you lay your hands upon, they are blessed in the name of Jesus. Walk in the blessedness of our Lord. Walk in greatness. Walk in abundance. Walk in dominion. Walk in prosperity. Walk in greatness. In the name of the Lord. I declare your going out is blessed. I declare your God coming in is blessed. In the name of the Lord. I declare your makabayara bashata la barabara bayata. I declare the taking, our taking of the world. It is blessed in the name of Jesus. And I declare the harvest that you released to us this morning. I declare that everybody is in harvest in the name of Jesus. You know. Naomi and his family thought they left farming. They thought they went to a place that they will be more blessed. They thought they went to a place, they, they thought they went to a greener pasture. But they don't know that they went into deadness. Because at the end, Naomi lost everything. Naomi lost her husband. Naomi lost her sons. But thus hear the spirit of the Lord. You are in plenty in the name of Jesus. The people they left behind, they did not die. They had in abundance. Because when Naomi came back, he came back into the time of harvest. I speak into your life. You are, you are in time. In the name of Jesus. There is no deadness in your life. As we saw from the word of the Lord today. That our God is timeless. Because you are God. I declare that you are timeless in the name of Jesus. I declare no barrenness. Anything that looks as if it is maturing into barrenness. Anything that looks as if it is not yielding. Because this is a season of harvest. And this is the day that will break into a new day. That will break into a new month. That will break into a new season. That will break into a new declaration of another theme. Of a new theme of a new month. I declare... There is no barrenness in the name of Jesus. You have in plenty. You have in abundance. In the name of Jesus. You have more than enough. You have more than enough. You have to give in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we receive it with all our spirit. And it is done. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And let the church say. Come and celebrate the Lord. And please take your seat.
and do your giving. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, our heart is set on you. We put you. You are the number one. You are the first. The church has started in Abuja. Hallelujah. Very soon, we are going to have God's sanctuary in Canada. Amen. Very soon, we have it all over every part of the world. Very, very soon. And I want us to do another thing. I want us to post on our timelines again, on our social media, everywhere. Because there's show today by 4 p.m. Post everyone in Abuja. Let them hear. Let them know. Let them attend the show. So we are going to post again today. So you can do that, what we did last week. You can do that right now for the show, for the evening. And also on the 2nd of April, we have International Money Conference. I tell you, you cannot miss this because it's, it is going to be another level. Another level. Another level. So it's going to be on Tuesday by 7 p.m. Not a physical gathering, but it's going to be online on our YouTube. Hallelujah. Do we have anybody worshiping with us for the first time? Today is the first time you are in church. Can you please identify by just raising up your right hand to the Lord? We just, oh my God. Come on, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate your welcome to church. Oh, oh, can you please be on your feet? Can you be on your feet? Let's see you. Oh my God, come on. Let's celebrate God for this great harvest. This is a great harvest. This is a great harvest. You are welcome to church and we are so glad that you came to church this morning. And please, we would like to know you the more. We would like to meet you one-on-one. -on -one. And please kindly pack whatever you came with this morning. And um, you are going to see our Zoe representative. Please kindly pack everything you have and please go with them. He's right there at the door. Come on, let's celebrate them as the goal to be attended to thank you come on what sanctuary let's give them a what sanctuary welcome hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord jesus all right oh uh, we started with the choir this morning lady shate me was lady shate me a great blessing come on let's celebrate her then followed by Minister Omotai by the edification and the opening of the service. Then WSD as in WSD, what a great blessing. What a great blessing. Thank you so much. And also WSC. What a great blessing. And was the word of the Lord great on you? Was it good to your spirit? To every part of your being? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So one more time, can you just say happy Easter, happy Easter, happy Easter, happy Easter, and celebrate everyone. Hallelujah. Once again, I would like to and celebrate our source and sustainer for this great privilege to be a blessing to the people, to the great people of God this morning. I honor and celebrate you greatly. Thank you and the leadership of the system. I honor everyone greatly. And like our father always say, 
that is so, is so great to pastor what sanctuary and it's also a great delight for me to pastor the church this morning hallelujah thank you so much happy easter to everyone and have a glorious week i see you in your testimony in great nights and others in your establishment in the name of the lord amen